following program contains language and subject matter that you may consider unsuitable for children. Parental discretion is advised. Greetings, Herfman and I, His Highness the Jackal. The Jackal. I'm going to pass the reins to Mr. Jackal, the new king of radio. <laughs> Asian. Asian. I think Jack was a Latino. I'm not sure, but he'll give it to you to hold on in second year. The Jackal. All right, everybody, welcome to Inside the Jackal's Head, right here live on PSN radio.com, also known as PSN Radio. To our Spanish listeners, and I want to welcome everybody listening from uh, uh, anywhere on the United States grid, outside the country. We have listeners all over the world listening right now that are live. Thank you for being there. And uh, everybody else is going to be checking out the podcast. I don't know if you guys have been following what's been happening, but uh, Crazy Maxine Waters got uh, Greta called uh, a few days ago or a couple of days ago. Uh, they, they pranked her. There's a couple of Russian comedians that are, have been doing a fantastic job at trolling Congress. They've gone right now, Maxine Waters twice. Uh, they got Adam Schiff with a, a hilarious prank call, uh, which had to do with uh, uh, practically they were offering naked pictures of Donald Trump. And uh, Adam Schiff was like, oh, my God, naked pictures of Trump. The gold mine is here. Finally, we, we got him on something. We could extort him out of office. Turned out it was a, a hoax. If you guys haven't heard it, it's actually quite hilarious. The first file here, this is U.S. Trial Representative uh, Adam Shifty Shifthead getting uh, called by Russian representatives trying to give away some uh, stuff on Trump. The reason I play this is because I want to kind of like show you guys uh, the genesis of where this comes from. And uh, we're going to get into a little bit of conversation on how stupid Congress is, that they actually fall the fullest crap. Now, just to show you just how stupid and crazy the uh, folks on the left have become, uh, but we're going to be back in a, in a few minutes. I really want to get to some of this audio. It's it's priceless. So check this out. For him to Mr. Powerby. Yes, of course. Great. Thank you. Hi. How are you? Hello, Mr. Schiff. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak with you. I know that you work for investigation regarding Trump and Russian government. Yes. We know some important information about that. Uh, and that, uh, that uh, is documented as well in materials you want to provide to us? Yes. Could I explain you where we are? Yes, of course. But, you know, again, I would just caution that uh, uh, our Russian friends may be listening to the conversation, so I wouldn't share anything over the phone that you don't want them to hear. But anyway, uh, she became famous because of uh, Putin is her godfather. Okay, Putin is godfather. Okay. She also known as a person who provided uh, uh, girls for escort for oligarchs, and she met with Trump, and she brought him one hour Russian girl celebrity Olga Buzova, who also known as a person with a strange reputation. Olga, and and how do you spell her name? Olga Buzova. Buzova. Um, so yes. Olga Buzova is a uh, friend of the uh, the reporter Sovchek? Yes, she's a friend of reporter and I think the a special agent of Russian Secret Service, Ksenia Sovchak. Um, that Sovchak is or Olga is? No, Sovchak is Ksenia. Okay, and so Buzova met with Trump uh, in, in uh, New York at some point after the 2013 Miss Universe uh, yes. pageant? Yes. Absolutely, and she got uh, compromising materials on Trump after their uh, short relations. Okay, and, and what's the nature of the compromise? Well, there were pictures of naked Trump. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so Putin was made aware uh, of the, the availability of the compromising material? Yes, of course. Uh, Buzova shared those materials with uh, Sobchak, and Sobchak shares those materials with uh, Putin because she's a goddaughter of Putin and Putin decided to press on Trump. Um, and uh, and the materials that you can provide to the committee or to the FBI, uh, would they corroborate this allegation? Sure, of course. Uh, when they were in Ukraine, we got their conversation by the phone where they discussed those uh, compromising materials. We are ready to provide it to FBI. 
So you, you have recordings of both Sovchek and Buseva, uh where they're discussing the compromising material on uh, Mr. Trump? Absolutely. And uh, we also know who was a mediator between Trump and Russian government, who met with the uh, ex-advisor of Trump, uh, Mr. Flynn. It was the Russian singer, very famous singer, Arkady Ukupnik, who met with Mr. Flynn on uh, Brighton Beach in Brooklyn in a special uh, Russian cafe, Langeron. What's the name of the cafe? Uh, uh, Langeron. Langeron? Yes, it's on the Brighton Beach. Okay, and uh, it's a special. When, when, it's a Russian district in uh, Brooklyn. And do you know what was discussed? They discussed many things, but the most interesting thing is they use a special. They use the special password uh, before before their meetings. When they met each other, they said, "Weather is good on Derbasovska." Weather. It rains. Is good. Yeah. In where? Weather is good on Deribasovska. There is a name of a street in Odessa. Did you Did you hear? Yes, I did. Uh, so it's a street in Odessa. Uh, yes. And the, the code word is weather is good on Deribasta? Deribasovskaya. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'll have my staff follow up to get spellings and, and more details on yes. this. Yes. And the second part of their password was... Uh, it rains again on Brighton Beach. It rains again on Brighton Beach. Yes. On that meeting, Ukupnik told Flynn that uh, all those compromising materials will never be released if uh, Trump will cancel all Russian sanctions. Okay. Um, well, obviously, we would uh, welcome a chance to get copies of those recordings. Um, so we will try to work with the FBI to figure out, uh, along with your staff, how we can obtain copies of those. Of course, we will provide you all our copies of all our materials, but I also would like to let you know that Sobchak and Buzova will pretty soon visit our country, and we could read them and deliver them to your embassy, and you also could, we also could extradite them to your country and you can put them to your special jail Guantanamo. Uh, well, I'll be in touch with the FBI about this and uh, and we'll make arrangements with your staff. I think it probably would be best to provide uh, these materials uh, to uh, both our committee and to the FBI. Um, and so we'll make arrangements uh, uh, between my staff and yours uh, on how to facilitate that. And uh, we'll also obviously net, let, let the FBI know about uh, Buseva and Sovchak's planned travel to Ukraine. I also advise you to check all Sovchak's uh, visits in the U.S. because she were, she was in, U- in the U.S. very often and uh, just to check what she did there, actually. And I also would like to look at uh, Russian cafe in Bri- on Brighton Beach, Langeron, and especially on the head of Russian mafia, Uncle Misha. Uncle Misha? And yes. he's in Brighton Beach? Yes, he's head of uh, Russian Mafia, and he's located on uh, re- on that uh, restaurant on uh, Brighton Beach. Okay. I just want to advise you just to look at them, please. All righty. Uh, good, this is uh, very helpful. I appreciate it. Anything else you wanted to uh, to add today? Well, I hope that my information will will be useful for you and your committee, and I also would like to advise you, when you or your colleagues will meet Mr. Trump, I advise you to tell him the uh, first part of the password on the weather is good on Deribasovska, and look how his uh, face will change the color. Uh, and, and so that, that uh, those uh, passwords were used with, uh, with Mr. Trump? Yes, correct. Um, okay. Well, uh, thank you very much. We will be back in touch uh, with you through our staff uh, to make uh, arrangements uh, to obtain these Correct. materials for our country. There you go. To make arrangements well, to get these materials. That's Adam Shifthead or Adam Shifty Shift or Adam Shift for Brains, whatever you want to call him. He's, uh, of course, uh, was the leader of the impeachment hustle, as we like to call it, uh, here on uh, Inside the Jackal's Head. Now, uh, Adam Schiff, uh, it's not the only one, like I said, who's uh, been caught in a prank call. 
Uh, and it's funny because, you know, the way he was uh, sounding in that audio clip, it's almost like he wanted uh, this to be real so bad so they could use this as a form of impeachment. Now, mind you, these are the same Democrats who uh, supported Bill Clinton, who literally lied under oath, had an affair with an intern, defended him throughout the impeachment, throughout the trial. Uh, he never got removed from office, even though he was impeached. Uh, but it's funny to see how, uh, you know, crazy these folks are. that They actually fall for this. But he's not the only one, not the only one to fall for this. Let's play Maxine Waters when she was crank called. Now, with Maxine, it's funny because she's been, uh, she's been pranked a couple times. And uh, she is really easy to catch on a prank. Uh, so just sit back, relax, and enjoy what we're going to hear. This is hysterical. Again, we're going to have Kaiser uh, in the second part of the hour here. Join us in a few minutes. And uh, probably right after uh, this uh, phone call ends, we'll have him on the air. I know he's uh, eagerly waiting to get on and talk about this and uh, discuss what we're about to hear. This is really funny stuff. So just uh, sit back, relax, and check out this audio, folks. See, it starts off with some grooving music. Here we go. Hello, everyone. You are watching Wawan and Lex's new show. And so today we are launching our social project. We will be calling world-famous characters to discuss actual natural and social problems on behalf of other famous people. Uh, the prank allegedly depends on the character we pretend to be during the call. It has to be someone powerful or influential. Yes, so let me introduce our alter ego. She is charming and very eco-friendly. And so, she breathes fire into those who pollute our atmosphere. She is also the person of the year, according to Time Magazine. You got it! It's Greta Thunberg! Wait, but isn't she now traveling around Europe, uh, conducting climate strikes? Exactly! So, let me introduce to you all our new Greta TH-1000! <laughs> and to keep this little bandy calm, I planted memories into her brain that I was her father's wanted. Wow, now we have a real Swedish family and Swedish scene, you know. Look, hello, Greta. Hello, asshole. Give me your plausible and an echo friendly young mother. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood. <clears throat> I, uh, well, I mix up the program. <clears throat> hello, Greta. Hello, daddy. That's better. So she's programmed to prank? Yes, she listened to all our previous calls. I'm Congresswoman Maxine Waters. I am the chairperson of the Financial Services Committee. I have a formalized impeachment inquiry. And of course, I have been calling for and talking about impeachment of this president since his inauguration. Congresswoman? Yeah. I have Greta and her father, Savante, on the line. Thank you very much. Congresswoman, this is Swante, Greta's father. And here's yes, Greta. Yes. Hello, Congresswoman Waters. Hello, I'm very happy to talk to you. Well, thank you both for calling me, and I'm very anxious to hear from you. Yes, I know that yours called you Aunt Maxine. This oh, is yes, it, yes, I think. Thank you. Is that true? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Oh, that's so nice. We have a wonderful climate strike to support the, the ecology of uh, Chunga Changa Island. Thousands of people came to meet me. We are standing together against the pollution uh, and to save our planet. I'm very glad that my cause finds so much support. I was in California last week. It was so great. Well, thank you, and I'm so glad you came to my state. And, of course, I know all about you. You have made quite a big, big, big thunder uh, on this issue. I am really, really very proud uh, of you and the work that you're doing. Uh, we're now in the North Carolina. Uh, so we are in the climate strike here in a meeting. Okay. So you're in the meeting now? You start The meeting has started? Yes, yes, already. Yes, yes, we, 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 we're, not, we're here now at the meeting, and if you will allow me, I will put you on a speakerphone. So, yes. yes. And we will let you say to people who is around here. 
I think that it will be great honors for them to hear you. So you can say some words of support to all the people who, who came here to support the problems of the uh, wonderful island and the ecology of the world. Which island are they targeting? Chunga Changa. Chunga Changa? Yes. Okay. In, I, that island is particularly threatened? Okay. Get involved. So let me get started, okay? Yes, we are Hello, ready. Everybody. You can start. Hello, everybody. This is Congresswoman Maxine Waters, and I am so pleased. Uh, to be on this telephone call with Greta Thunberg. I am just so proud of her and her father, Savante Thunberg, and the work that they are doing. As you know, Greta uh, is an environmental activist, and she took part in the United Nations Climate Summit in New York recently, and she has been traveling and she has been the greatest advocate for what is happening with our climate and the environment. And I'm very pleased that she's with you in North Carolina, where you're focusing on protecting the very important island of Chula Challenge. And so I could just go on and tell you that I believe that she certainly should win the Nobel Peace Prize for what she is doing. But what's most important right now is that you all there who are working so hard on this issue uh, to make sure that the island is protected, that you give her all of the support that you can possibly give her because she's giving you all of the support uh, that she can give to you and this is so important. She has made a mark all over the world now, and a lot of attention is focused on her, and people are listening to what she is saying. And I want you to know that I am listening to her, and I am paying attention to her, as many of the members of Congress are now paying attention to her. So I'm just delighted to be on this telephone call with her today. Thank you very much. Greta, are you still there? Thank you for that, Watts. It was a great honor for us to hear your voice. Could you help to solve the environmental problems of the island of Chunga Changa? Well, um, now that I'm focused on it, I'm going to do everything that I can, thanks to you. Yes, I will work with everybody to do everything that we can to save the island. I want to tell you something uh, confidential about the meeting of uh, Greta and Trump in the UN uh, climate meeting. Yes, and I said to my dad that I want to share it with you. So <clears throat> it, it was really ter terrible. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm terrified of what Trump's doing. And I even can't sleep or eat when I see him on TV. And uh, it was really a terrible meeting in the UN building in September with him. Uh, and I had nightmares afterwards. Uh, it's it's terrible. Oh, I don't know how to say about it. Hmm. I saw him in the hallway. Uh, he was with security. I shouted at him, signed the Paris Climate Agreement again. Uh, he came over. He, he laid it towards me and said softly, Listen to me careful, little girl. Uh, you will never achieve your goal. Uh, like this Congress fool tried to accuse me. He said you will never achieve your goal? He continued. Oh my but, goodness. Did you ask him if he would rethink signing the Paris Agreement? It Was that your question to him? Yes, yes. That was, uh, he added that. Uh, and you know what? Uh, I will tell you the truth. Anyway, I really wanted to push the Ukrainian president to put my uh, competitor on trail, and he will go to trail with you, with your bunch of ecology and Democrats. I already have a separate cage for all of you. I was crying. Oh my God, did you cry? 
Yes, I was crying, and even I'm crying now because it's very hard to remember this. He said that he said her, uh, you know, little girl, uh, nobody believe you anyway. I really, in, I'll tell you the truth. I really pushed on Ukrainian president, and you know that uh, you will never achieve your goals like this congressional fools who accused me, and you know what? So nobody will believe you. You will be in trial like in, in my competitor. Yes, he added so oh, that no one he mentioned Ukrainian president. Yes, he said that, and he he added nobody will believe you anyway. Nobody will believe you anyway. And what else did he yeah. say? That's all. <laughs> it he, was enough for me. <laughs> yes, it, it was terrible. Okay. He, uh, did he said like uh, that I'm silly little girl. He he laughed at me and uh, ran away after that. But you know, we uh, Red Greta always has a tape recorder in her pocket to record uh, her performances, and those words of uh, Mr. Trump got on the record. So we have audio evidence of that. Are you gonna be in Washington anytime soon? I want you to come and meet with me in Washington. Okay. Okay. I think it would be it would help to uh, finish what you have, what you have started. I mean, impeachment process. I, I think if it's possible, Greta could be could uh, make a speech in a Congress if you if you will need it. Oh yes, I am absolutely still working. We are working very hard. We're putting together the facts, and we're going after him. We're going to try everything that we have to impeach him, yes. And if the public knew that he talked to Greta like that, he made her cry and told her she would never achieve, this will go against him too. And he added, and he added that he pushed on the Ukrainian president. I think he didn't expect that we have a record of that. Will you bring it to me? Of course. Bring us like they are having a call to yeah, with me. Okay, you tell me when you what, what day you can get there, and we'll arrange to meet with you as quickly as we can. I, I hope that uh, Greta could be a whistleblower uh, to hide her, to hide her, and to keep her in safety. Yes, you 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 let me know. Let my office know. Simone is who arranged the call. Let Simone know when you're coming. I will make myself available to you whenever you can get there. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's wow, be in touch. Wow, thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you a lot. And right. uh, so see you. Uh, I hope that we will see you next week, if it's possible, of course. So let's be in touch uh, with your staff and uh, people who can... Uh, who can work with us. Okay, I look forward to that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congresswoman Water. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Today we have some of the funniest things I've ever seen on the Internet. And, you know, the Internet's full of really funny things, but when it happens to be politics and prank calls, it sometimes can be a beautiful thing. So here we have Maxine Waters getting prank called, and it is just the most ironic thing in the world. About a month ago or so, she got on her pedestal and said that Ben Carson was not intelligent enough to run HUD. And, you know, out of all the things that she could criticize him for, she criticizes his intelligence. Yes, we criticized the first neurosurgeon in history to remove conjoined twins successfully. So he pioneered a medical science. And you question his intelligence. I think we question your intelligence. However, the same very intelligent woman couldn't identify a prank phone call by Greta Thunberg. And the prank callers do a wonderful job of really not selling themselves as to it being a prank call, so it actually lasts all the way through, which is pretty unusual for a prank call. I like that they actually try to do it that way, and it shows how Maxine is. 
the minute she realizes that there's something in it for her, she's all game. If it had anything to do with anything she didn't personally agree with, she's going to turn her nose up at it. She had a moment to get on her pedestal, and she does so. She does so willingly as, well, I'm going to go ahead and talk to a whole bunch of climate activists. They really want to hear from me. I just find it pretty funny also that she's running places that are literal shitholes. Her district is terrible. No one should have to be living where Maxine Waters runs her place. It's No one should be living there. And she has the audacity to talk about saving the environment and climate and all these other things. She's a speaker. She talks to people. She gets them to believe in the stuff that she's saying. And she uses her race as a guide. And here she is just falling for like the biggest joke in the world. First off, why would even Greta want to talk to you? You never once question why Greta would want to talk to you. Is there like a memo going around the Democratic Party where it's like, well, Greta's going to be calling you at some point. Just be ready. And see how little info we're talking. She's ready to work with her off the bat. There's no, well, let's work things out. You're just a kid. And there's none of that. It's just, you're on my side. Let's go for it. And she never even catches on. It, it doesn't even sound like Greta as far as I'm concerned. The lady does a good job, but she doesn't sound like Greta as far as I'm concerned. I actually would have caught on to that probably very quickly. The accent isn't quite right. But it's hilarious how they pull this off on her, and she can't do anything about it. She just goes along with it the whole entire time. I'm starting to think that they could have probably had her doing, like, jumping jacks or something at some point. Maxine Waters, man, she, she takes the cake. People are, like, prank calling her because she's just not that intelligent. She is a easy target. And honestly, almost all the Democrats are easy targets, and I suggest a whole bunch of people do this. I think this is hilarious. It's not exactly harassment, but it is a prank, and it is pretty funny. The woman commits herself hook, line, and sinker to this prank call, and nothing's even questioned. This is the leader. This is the person who wants to be president. This is the person that wants power. And she can't even identify a prank phone call. She has no freaking clue. How lost is this woman? She just speaks. There's no real brain power behind any of it. Did you try to confirm that it was actually her on the line? No, you're just interested in the politics of the situation, so you'll take up any political offer that there's on the table. You didn't back anything up. You didn't worry about anything. It's, oh, it's Greta. I'm going to just, oh my goodness, it's Greta. Let's be buddies with her right now, because that's the kind of crap we're talking about. Democrats went all with, go off with the global warming nonsense, and now Greta is going around doing her thing. And they're all of the same kin. They're all being paid by the same general people. And furthermore, God is being abused. Have that girl go to school and have some regular hours like anybody else. Let her live in a home, not on like these billionaire yachts. That's not really home. That's not having a stable environment. But Maxine wouldn't know the difference. I guess the way Greta lives is quite better than a lot of the people that live in her districts. She gets billionaire yacht mattresses. And the people that live around Maxine Waters' place, they get whatever crap mattresses get thrown out at the back of a damn motel. But because Greta has political influence, oh boy howdy, let me jump on that. And she does, hooks it at the Lion Sticker. She buys it and just goes with it. Why in the world is Maxine in any kind of power? Really, with her intelligence level, I don't even see how predominantly black district would even vote for her. Yeah. With her even using race. See, that's an excellent question that I uh, posed her at the uh, end of the clip. Uh, why does she even have any power in Congress? Why is this woman elected to Congress at all? Why is she a representative? Why is she sitting there uh, passing bills? This woman is batshit crazy, stupid. I mean, she gets prank called multiple times. I didn't play the, uh, the other clip because it was just too long, and I really wanted to get to this one with uh, Greta Thunberg. Uh, this is really, really funny audio. If you think about the context of what's happening here, uh, it sounds nothing like Greta. Uh, you could clearly, I mean, anybody with a sane working brain can understand that they, this is a joke just by the things that are being said to them. But she falls for it every time. Now I got Kaiser on the line. Kaiser, you've heard the audio. You, you know what I'm talking about. What are your uh, thoughts on what, you know, I just played here? 
Well, I mean, you have to look. Um, Maxine's, unfortunately, Maxine's district, uh, she specifically had engineered so that she, you know, and, and the unfortunate part is in that area of California where she's, or who she, you know, is in Congress for, uh, she's probably at the top of the pool. And educationally, thanks to years of uh, just women, you know, they, they always wanted women to graduate colleges no matter what. Um, I saw it when I was going through college. Um, the interesting part is, you know, she's probably one of the top tier from her constituency. And they get to vote them in. And That's so that, scary that she's that one of the answers, top Well, but see, we, we are a representative republic. So, you know, they, they deserve a voice, too. Everybody deserves a voice, you know. Um, and and, and it's, anyways, the point is that um, she wasn't the only one. I remember when Adam Schiff got hoaxed by the Russian Radio I played show. that actually, uh, I played that right before when they uh, called him. Now, this is uh, what I was getting to and alluding to early on. It, it seems like we're not electing the brightest people on the uh, left here on Congress because, you know, you get one, I assume everybody gets the, uh, the heads up, hey, you know, we're being prank called, you know, guys be, uh, be on alert. But, you know, to get at him, to get Maxine, she's been actually pranked a couple times. Uh, and this is the first time with Greta. Uh, I mean, they can prank these folks, and, and I highly recommend anybody who might be listening to this on podcast later, do this yourself. Just call them. Call your representative and, and prank them. See how they fall for it. See how dumb some of these folks are, because it's incredible to sit back and listen to, to how open these guys are. Especially, you know, the Adam Schiff one was really funny, uh, Kaiser, because they, they literally are offering him naked photos of Trump, and he's falling for it 100%. Like, oh, yeah, and then he, yeah. he tried to play it off uh, when he got caught. I bet it happens more often than you'd want to know. These are just the things that have made the news. Right. Um, I think it was Sheila Jackson Lee having her episode on the plane. Uh -huh. That somebody just tape recorded. See, a lot of the policies they make, and they hold police and even firefighters, any public official that's lowly, uh, if they get caught doing something on camera, they're the they're the first out there on the Democrat side to right. lead the you know get them fired, get them out of their job. The problem is Congress now with this day and age. Once somebody's shown incompetence, and, and Nancy Pelosi's doing it too, and look at her district in San Francisco. It's a very well-off affluent district. Mm -hmm. um, but she's a mafia princess. People right. forget she comes from the the uh, um, mob down there in uh, um, oh, Maryland. Um, mm -hmm. uh, why am I mind dumping? They did an expose on the district and the gentleman who just passed away. He's from that Baltimore. Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, Her you're talking about uh, Eli uh, Cummings. Yeah, Elijah Cummings. Elijah yep, Cummings, yep. yeah. Eli, yep, Elijah, yep. close enough. And, um, no, it's just short for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, uh, but that's that's that was all a mob. Yeah, and yeah. she's a mafia princess. So there's a picture of her, and this never really made a trade. And if you're looking at something you want to laugh about, uh, she was in a Buick or a Cadillac commercial, and you can find the pictures of her in a bathing suit mm -hmm. back in, like, the 50s or 60s. Can't remember which. Oh. And uh, it, she was, you know, easy on the eyes back then. Uh, now, look at how inept she is. She's doing something oh, goodness, that's yeah. extra, extra illegal by uh, holding up the uh, paperwork going to the Senate. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I mean, this is just well. That gets to that. That gets now into the the Trump impeachment hustle. Which uh, the, the funny thing about that is, uh, you know, why are they holding this up? If they have all the evidence and it's all like concrete, it's because they have nothing, and they know they have nothing. That's why they want right. more witnesses. They want more of this. They, if you have articles of impeachment, if you have the goods, why do you need more witnesses? Simple well, question. Well, her plot. Her plot was to bring down his numbers. Right. She's not. She wasn't smart enough, and none of the Democrats were, 
to realize that Trump would weather the storm. Oh, of course. This is this is not going to be an issue for Trump. And they're just banking that somehow if they keep this investigation going long enough, and that's what they want it to be, remain a, an investigation, and they'll come up with other articles. They can impeach him as much as they want. Um, well, they're they're like on what? This is uh, Article Six, Seven uh, times how they're trying to impeach. I know that Al Green tried to. Uh, he was the first one, I believe, who sent yeah, articles of impeachment. Day. Yeah, and uh, th- since even before Trump was elected, there, you know, or, or took official office, they were saying, "Oh, the articles of impeachment are, are going to be on underway. We're going to impeach this guy." Of course, you know, you have radicals who got elected afterwards, like uh, Rashada. Talib, Talib, whatever her name is, and uh, she said we're gonna impeach the motherfucker, and you know, and th- that was the day that she gets into office. So I mean, this has been going on since before the Ukraine phone call. Uh, the the whole you know Russia collusion failed because there was no Russian collusion. Hell, if you want Russian collusion, the Adam Schiff call was to a couple of Russians, even though it was a joke. And it was a prank. They were Russian radio hosts. Well, he took it seriously. Right. Remember, they said <laughs> that uh, the radio show guys presented themselves as Putin's friends or somehow connected politically with him. Correct. So, I mean, that that's collusion right there. And collusion's not even a crime. What they're trying to get at is trying to say a collusion is the same as a conspiracy. It's not. Mm-hmm. Um, you think about this. If you want to see heavy duty collusion, remember when Obama told Medvedev, wait until after the election, then I'll have more leeway. And everybody forgets this, you know, because Mm -hmm. Americans have a short memory. Right. span of memory is, you know, last week. And that's unfortunate. And for a representative republic, we're finding out now that that can outright be deadly. And with everybody leaving, um, um, oh, what was it? Um, anyways, I don't know where I was going to go there, but with, <sighs> with them not having an ability to get people out of office and they stay there forever, they become entrenched, they right. draw their own districts, uh, we get the bottom of the barrel. And you think about it, with everything that's gone on, and the anal exam anybody on the Republican side gets when they run, uh, the Republicans aren't much better. And that's just a fact. It's become, and especially with the neocons and neoprogs, progressives, all you're getting is um, that, that same tier of candidate. Mm-hmm. The one that looks good on paper, but usually they get there on the, on the uh, D.C. coffee clatch in the morning and then the cocktail clatch in the evening group and you'll see judges you'll see congressmen senators you know even sometimes uh what do you call them uh uh the the the, uh judiciary members of the uh uh, supreme court out Uh and about gallivanting together oh yeah yeah well, it's, so, it's like pro wrestling. They're all friends behind the scenes. It's all one big act, one big show. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I, I haven't seen the uh, the Republican uh, side as united as I have uh, seen them in the last couple months because I think it's become so apparently clear to the average American citizen what's going on here uh, that if they don't represent, you know, against this clear hoax, uh, they're going to lose their base completely. And they, they're they already on, on sketchy ground as it is because they've lost a few states. We've had, uh, what, the last elections, a bunch of Democrats elected them to uh, you know, Congress. And, and, and that, I mean, it's scary to think about how leftist Congress is right now. And the Senate really needs to, you know, there's going to be a Republican Party in the future. This is the moment they have to really get together and push back because Democrats are just flooding everywhere. I mean, in oh, yeah. places you would never think of, like Minnesota has Elon Omar, who by all means should be in prison. I mean, this woman has no uh, reason to be on the streets. She's violated. She's done more crime 
that the normal person would, you know, be in jail for right now. If anybody else would have done just half of what she's done, they'd be in prison for, like, at least five, ten years. But, yes, she's, you know, without a scratch on her. She's not here legally. She brought in people illegally. She's not even from this country. Hates America. Somehow Minnesota voted her in. How does that happen? Well, it's not somehow. I mean, just like Ohio. (laughs) When I came back... uh, from the Marine Corps, Ohio, Columbus, the capital city, when I left in the mid-80s, uh, going to the Army first, and how oh, Ohio changed in just a couple weeks. Uh, but th- the interesting thing is we got gifted 60,000 Somalis, right. and uh, they refused to integrate. Uh-huh. Uh, they They still have their tribal ways. I mean, there's entire apartment areas that it's from this tribe. And another apartment area will be another tribe. And so they can't even keep together as a small community. But if they see something, and, and the first key is a Muslim, once they see that, and Rashida Tlaib benefits the same way because Dearborn area, Dearbornistan, yep. in uh, Detroit, outside of Detroit, um, which is where I worked when I was a Fed, um, they're, they're going to benefit. And she got arrested trying to storm the stage at, at a Trump rally mm-hmm. and uh, looking like a complete jerk. But to them, politics has always been a blood sport. Republicans have always had a hard time and they don't. Everybody always forgets Trump is not a Republican. He is a Manhattan Democrat, and he knew what he was getting into, and he knew how to deal with them. And he gets down in the mud with them. He does not mm-hmm. care. He's yeah. a billionaire. He doesn't have shame. Honestly, I don't think he's even a Democrat or a Republican at this point. I think he's it, it honestly, and and I know he's a part of the Republican Party, and he ran as a Republican, and you know I want to get Republicans, you know, really to support him. But to be honest, he's more of a centrist. That uh, you know, he's center. Uh, of both, because if you look at his policies, he is willing to really negotiate with both, you know, sides, and it's the, you know, the clashing of the constant hate from the left that really keeps things from being negotiated, because I think at the end of the day, he's not that far apart from being liberal or conservative, and even if you look back at Trump 30 years ago, when you see him speaking like on TV or Oprah or whatever these, you know, shows used to have him on, which by the way, before he was president, they all loved him. The View, Oprah, all these folks who hate him now, loved yep. him. And uh, when he used to be on these shows, you could see that he had kind of both sides on him because, again, he grew up in New York, rich. Uh, you know, he went through a moment where he did lose his money and he regained it all. And, uh, you know, that part of it, I think, and plus, he, you know, he's traveled all over the world, so he's seen a lot of the different governments, he's seen a lot of the different countries and their poverty and their bridge parts. So he really has that kind of knowledge and, uh, you know, insight that a lot of us don't have. Plus, he grew up in New York, so he has like that New Yorker way of speaking and, and presenting himself. But if you look at his policies and what he does, he really is more center of the road than he is either Republican or Democrat. At least that's my take. That's why when he ran as a Republican, I, I wasn't shocked. But if he would have ran as a Democrat, I would have been shocked either. Because either one would fit, you know, the bill. Now, of course, you have Hillary running in 2016, and you have, you know, such a huge Democratic pool that was running at that moment where maybe he felt he had no chance. And the Republican side was a lot easier, I think, for him to get through because it was a bunch of, you know, really clowns let's be honest uh the 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 most i think challenging one they had he ran right through him which was uh jeb bush that would have been probably the 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 safest candidate going into 2016 and he destroyed him i mean jeb bush will never be president after 2016 he's done like he should just not even consider running for for office at all at this point and uh i actually one person who has come uh to light in the last uh year 
and has kind of redeemed uh, the GOP of 2016 is uh, Ted Cruz, believe it or not. I think he's come on really strong with the way he's presented himself in uh, the last uh, six months to a year. Uh, so he might be looking a little strong for maybe, you know, in the next uh, election cycle uh, after the, uh, the, you know, this year's election. I don't think he's running against Trump. Guys, so I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but there's like right now, what happened in 2016, you're kind of seeing that on the uh, Democratic side where they have nobody. I mean, Joe Biden, really? That's the best they could do. Sleepy Joe, creepy, smelly, sniffing Joe. I mean, if that's the well, best you got, I mean. Well, like I, I was saying, he is a, a, a classical de- uh, uh, Democrat. Uh, he is. A classical liberal. A liberal just means you're free, freely thinking and trying to find something, like you said, more center. Right. The liberal, the what we call liberal now is a mouth. It's actually a bastardization of the term I don't like. It's the neo progressives mm-hmm. and the neo cons. Jeb Bush is a prime example of a neo con. Same with Mitt Romney. They will continue the liberal parties. Parties. And the deep state, which is nothing more than the entrenched state of the SES, Special Executive Service, and on the intel side, it's the SIS, Special Intelligence Service. These are these are not GS-level people. That's actually their pay code. We're talking about people that make six figures a year. And uh, they, they've been there for 30 years, 20-some years, and they're going to be there after this president, and they're like, we can outweigh them. And that's why State Department drags their feet. Justice drags their feet because all they got to do is drag their feet for eight years. They did the same thing to Ronald Reagan. Mm-hmm. He's a Democrat in in the means of like a Thomas Tip O'Neill, a blue dog Democrat, um, and and also a business Democrat. And that's what he was, a business Democrat. Yep. Uh, he ran afoul of the Clintons because, you know, he discovered who Jep- Jeffrey Epstein was and saw that they were hanging with him. And he was not going to abide another Clinton presidency. Mm-hmm. And that's what they tried to do. They tried to do a Bush Clinton and another Bush Clinton. That's what the whole deal was. And within that year, this right now, what you're seeing a test bed is going to go on. I did a show with a brother of mine who lives very close to Virginia. And um, he, you know, it's funny. He's a Marine. Uh, we're separated by a few years and uh, former Marine. And um, just like I am, former active serving Marine. And uh, people were shocked when they see us together because it's it's almost like uh, oh, what was Miami Vice, like a Crockett and Tubbs kind of thing. <laughs> and, uh, but the funny thing is, he sees this is a setup, just like they're trying to do everything to get his numbers down. And so they got all these people riled up because of the Second Amendment. I mean, this is classical liberal uh, thing, just like that Charlottesville thing. They keep saying that Spencer that Duke and that uh, Kessler, who organized that thing, uh, that they're right wing. No, Kessler actually was at Occupy Wall Street, voted for Obama. Uh, Spencer, uh, he he always maintained he was a liberal and not a good liberal, but, you know, a a progressive, more of a communist. And you have Duke, and uh, Duke's just a goofball, and I believe he was a Democrat out of Louisiana the first time he ran for office. And uh, it just makes me laugh all the time to hear them say they've all been arrested by the FBI at one point or another. Correct. And yeah. so that is COINTELPRO. They are doing nothing but this this next Virginia thing on the Second Amendment with Northam. And still, he hasn't admitted to being either in the Klan outfit or the blackface. He just said he was in the picture. Mm-hmm. So I, I think he was in the Klan outfit, honestly. And... West Virginia, look, everything's named after old Robert Byrd, a Democrat, mm-hmm. a grand legal of the Klan. See, they get away with that garbage. And you saw Clinton, you saw Bush, you saw everybody saying how great a guy Robert Byrd was. Yep. So, and they're trying to pull that move again in Virginia. And Virginia's ripe. Uh, it only switched blue because of... Uh, all the people leaving California, mm-hmm. able to get jobs in D.C. Northern Virginia is the only reason why that place is blue, and it yep. outpopulates. And uh, anything around there, Virginia or uh, Maryland, 
all that area and parts of um, oh, I'm I'm mind dumping the other place, but it, it, it Seattle's it, it, another. Yeah, Seattle's having a, a huge uh, blue movement over the last decade, also. Uh, but you know, it's funny. A lot of these folks, and you're right, they're coming out of California. Why? Because California has become, in parts, a shithole. I mean, uh, if there's no other way to describe it, you know. There's districts, uh, Nancy Pelosi, San Francisco district is a disaster. You know, for all the folks who love California, you got to look at it as what it is. It, and it's funny, uh, Maxine Waters is uh, in a district in California. Uh, ev- everywhere you look where it's heavily Democratic, that's the problem. And, and a lot of the folks are leaving California because of that issue, that, and that's why they're ending up in other states. And you're absolutely right, they're flipping other states from red to blue because they're they're going to live there. And uh, that's a problem for the Republicans. Uh, that's a big issue uh, going forward. Do you think that's going to affect the election coming up in the next few months? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, I'm sure Brandon, all of us agree. Here's why. They, they leave California but want to bring California's failed policies to the rest mm-hmm. of the country. And that's just a given. I mean, th- these people, they're, they're, they have one aim. Politics is a blood sport. And, you know, I've been around these people when I was a Fed, and I hated going to D.C. D.C. is its just a scummy city. Uh, it's beautiful in D.C. itself, right where it's protected. But the outlying areas, even Georgetown and stuff, is really degenerated. Uh, and it's because of liberal policies, to use that terminology, I, 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 let's say progressive policies, because I really hate using the term liberal to broad brush it. Um, but I just know everybody likes to use that term, and I hate using it, but it's a fact. Um, that's what they say. And you see these things happening, and I totally get it. But the thing is, the politics of the area, the scummy, dirty politics has just inculcated D.C. as being not just a swamp that got drained to make a town out of, but it's actually a swamp of scumminess. It's just nobody. It's almost like California. If any if everybody on the audience knows if they're from flyover country, you go to uh, uh, certain parts of New York, you mm-hmm. get fake people. Most yep. of New York, though, you're going to get real people. But mm-hmm. parts of the city, you get these people that all, you know, Manhattan being a prime example. You know, I'm the Manhattan money delete. Uh, you get these people, I'm better than you. Oh, okay, whatever. And then you got in California where... Which, by the way, you're, you're class, talking about like the, the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez types, the AOC types. Well, she she got picked. She's an <laughs> actress. The, the oh, yeah, yeah, we she, know that, yeah. Yeah. She got picked to run. Uh, Chink Uger used her, uh-huh. and uh, that, that's just a fact. And she she was elected. She was a bartender before that. So mm-hmm. I don't really know if... At a taco bar said, stand, she, by the way. Huh? At a taco bar stand. Yeah. But the but the <laughs> problem is is that she, uh, she came from a moneyed family. Yeah. I mean, she was wearing big money clothing before she was even running um so you went know, to a good like, went to a good school uh yep. you know i mean she she was a princess she had everything you know given to her she she didn't suffer uh she wasn't having hard times uh in fact it, it's amusing because you look at her and her background you don't get to a college like the one she got into uh, unless you're really, really smart, which we know she's not. Um, so it wasn't a scholarship. You get into there because of money, basically. And uh, yep. her parents had enough to pay for her tuition. She got in. She did her little dancing on the rooftop. And, uh, you know, the, and she and, and really uh, what, you know, the funny part about her getting any position at all is, yeah, again, you said it, she's an actress. She belonged to the Socialist Democrat group. And, uh, you know, the Young Turks, uh, Shank, Shank, whatever his name is, uh, he is basically her, her uh, puppet master. That whole organization is really the, the reason she's in her position. And that's why she's so anti-Trump, anti-right. And they write her dialogue, like literally the the entire New Green Deal and all this junk, she didn't write any of that. 
This has been going on for years. These folks have had this engineered uh, for a long time, and they were looking for that right face that they could sell. And, uh, you know, what's easier to sell than a pretty girl who's Hispanic right now? And that's what they got. And she's willing and able to be the puppet under these puppet masters. But, yeah, you're 100% right. She's not a legit person. She wasn't legitimately put into position. In fact, the uh, person that she beat, I can't remember the name of it, was somebody who had been there for a long time and, you know, wasn't doing any anything really for the Bronx, let's just say. So it was kind of like an easy right. switch. Right. The, the thing about it, though, is uh, she's like a Nancy Pelosi type or a Barack Obama type. You know, everybody forgets Obama, mm-hmm. you know, people forget about his mommy. First mommy, she was CIA. That's a fact. And so was her daddy. Stanley mm-hmm. and Dunham, her, that's his mom. Uh, she got involved with Frank Marshall Davis, who was the uh, publisher of the Red Chicago Red Star, which was a communist newspaper, and he was a sideline pornographer. Anybody can do a quick Google search and find Stanley and Dunham, in racy pornography uh, pictures from the 60s. And they were taken at Frank's house. Correct, that's what yeah. he did. That yep. was his main way of making money. Uh, there's always been an issue that Frank's his daddy, his real daddy. Mm. Uh, then she goes over to Indonesia working for an NGO. Sound familiar yet? Uh, uh-huh. uh, while she's working over there, she marries Lolo Satoro. All the birthers were idiots because they should never have focused on the birth certificate because whether or not I'm born in in where I'm from or you're born where you're from, if our parents take us over to a country and surrender our uh, our immigration, you know, i.e. our national national citizenship to get get citizenship of Indonesia because it was in a state of war. That's mm-hmm. the only way he could get a uh, get a go to school over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, once they did that, even me and you and and Brandon, if our parents brought us back, we would have to re-immigrate. Correct. Guess what? Under the INA, you're no longer a natural born citizen. That's a fact, mm-hmm. and that's the way they should have attacked him because that was the way you could have pulled him out of office. But uh, they didn't do that. Ted Cruz can't run for office because he'll run into the same problems Obama did, where he was born. He was born mm. in Canada. So if he runs for presidency, and he knows that he's open to that now. Um, I like where he's gone, and I wasn't going to vote for him if he got the nod because of that fact. I would be a hypocrite, you know, if I were to be... I'm surprised nobody really brought that up when he was running. I mean, that's something he should have In other words, he shouldn't even have been on stage at the GOP at all. Well, I, I wouldn't be shocked he, he's on stage because he is a senator and, and a good one. He was a good one back then. Uh, I didn't like how he soiled himself to go for the run for president because mm-hmm. he's a much better jurist and uh, a smarter man than that. But he did. You know, like, politics is acting. It's all fraudulent fake. But and 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 to a point, they all become that. Uh, if you ever tried to talk to your congressman or your senator, you'll find that out when they say, "Well, let me have you talk to my assistant." Or if you have to tell them something, they have to have an assistant in the room with them. So right. you really can't talk. And I'm I'm funny. If I trust somebody enough to tell them something, I'll do that alone. I don't want two, three people hearing it because everybody will have their whole different way to spin it. Mm-hmm. And after I leave, he can spend whatever the hell he, I want him. He wants to spend what I said to him. But I don't like it when other people can throw their two cents in and make it sound however. Because, in all honesty, that's how the polit- politicos do this. And that way they can say, no, I, I didn't talk to him alone. I had my assistant there. And the assistant will lie, lie, lie. And now right. you've got two, for, two against one. And that's not mm-hmm. the way... Our system was designed. And uh, so instead of it just being a tip for tap between me and him, it'd be a tip for tap between me, him, and his assistant and his other assistant. And most Americans are so stupid, they'll be like, well, 
that congressman or senator must be telling the truth because listen to his assistant and his assistant that gets paid by right. Yeah. So, you know, the whole point is money's gotten into the system. Trump actually is trying to stop that. He fired a shitload of people, thank God. And mm -hmm. they were all SES tier people. And uh, this is what he's got to do. If he wants a shot of staying in the office, uh, that's what he's got to do. And I hope that now that Iraq is saying, get out of our country, I hope he says, okay. Let Iraq blow up again, man, because geopolitically, we don't need to be in the Middle East anymore at all. Correct. You know, Israel can hold its own. Israel's a strong nation. We don't need to be there for Israel, like everybody wants to say. We don't need to be there for oil anymore. Trump's made us energy independent. Mm -hmm. So why are we still there? Oh, to keep the Port of Hormuz open? The Strait of Hormuz? Yeah, what, I, probably, what I do yeah. love, though, Kaiser, is, you know, you know, if we pull troops out, you know it's going to be just a, a nightmare for Trump. They're going to attack him for pulling the troops out. If we leave the troops in, they're they going to say, well, he's the war. No, no, but here's the thing. This is the hypocrisy. If he leaves troops in or he sends more troops, well, he's a warmonger. Look at him. He just wants more war. But if he pulls troops out, is well, look at that. He's, you know, he's pulling troops out. How dare he do that? He's leaving our, you know, our, our guys and, and, uh, our allies in, uh, oh, to be open to, you know, get destroyed. And, and, you know, there's no win for this president. No matter which he round he kill. goes, which is, uh, and I agree that, you know, we, we, we really should not be in, involved in all these Middle East wars. We've been involved there way too long. I mean, 9 11 happened how long ago? And we're still not only, you know, fighting in the Middle East, you know, there's all kind of enemies where, we're partaking in wars and uh, last administration gave rise to ISIS it took what Russia the the Kurds it took us it took everybody to take ISIS semi down because there's still cells out there but we took you know the caliphate we took the ISIS for the most part but here's a great you know the, the thing about it uh do we really know they're 100 percent gone no we don't but again, we worked with the Russians, we worked with all these other groups, which are our enemies. So, I mean, there's a whole lot of different things happening all at once, which make absolutely no sense. And if this president does anything, immediately he's attacked, no matter what way he does it. But did you notice how ridiculous it sounded, even as it came out of your mouth, saying they're going to attack us for leaving? No, we're being kicked out. And all we'll do is go to Kuwait or Saudi Arabia or somewhere like that. And you're going to get wash, rinse, repeat. No, no, but uh, see, you, 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 you left, you, and you left, you, and you left. Yeah, no, but uh, hold on, but you're, 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 but what you're saying, let me ask a question real quick. Are you saying uh, that it sounds dumb because you, you think that I said it as. Uh, as they would. You no, but I'm saying I'm saying as said. Congress and the media are yes. going to attack. Okay, yeah, it, just it, so we're on the same page. Ridiculous! Not what you were saying. It was you were saying it as them, right. and it sounded ridiculous as you were saying it, knowing that's what they would say. Correct. Because yeah. he's being kicked out, and anyways, so they can't say he left. That's just going to sound. But ridiculous. that's how, but you know that's how they're going to spin American it. People won't buy it. That's anyways. I'm gonna finish on this. <laughs> but you so, know they're going to spin it that way. Missed, that's <laughs> no, no. I'm telling you, there's a reason why he's going up in the polls still, because the media, people are sick of the media. Uh, but you left one of the allies we had out, and that was Iran. And most Americans, when you talk to them, you don't, they don't know the difference between Sunni and Shia. I've lived over there. I know the difference between them. Sunni is Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Dubai. You know, the, those kind of areas. That's where the Sunnis live. The Shias live in Iran, Iraq, portions of Iraq. Uh, Saddam had a pretty uh, open society. The women didn't have to wear veils and headdresses. And the, the uh, Shia and the Christians were in charge because people forget Saddam was Sunni. And his second in charge, Tariq Aziz, was a Christian. And they were both from Tikrit. That's why both of their last names in our parlance was Al Tikriti, from the city of Tikrit. And they don't know that the Sunnis 
and the Shia. Here's where the split happened was with Ali. The Shia had a leader by the name of Ali. He was the nephew of Muhammad. When Muhammad died, the Shia were saying it has to be in the bloodline of Muhammad. It travels up. Ali was a fighter. The Sunnis were like, no, we need the highest cleric to take Muhammad's place. And so when what they did was they invited Ali, who was a great warrior, to come to it's in Iraq, and you see it a lot. You'll see the people, and when I start talking about it, you'll, you'll realize what I'm talking about. There's a town there. They invite Ali to come and help. During this battle, during the time, they behead him. They cut his head off. They betray him. That's why when you look in Iraq every year, you'll see one little town, and uh, that town, they will flatulate themselves with uh, chains to make their backs bleed, They'll cut their heads with knives, and they do it every year, and it's in Kabbalah. And that's a fact. That's where it happened. And But see, most Americans don't see that that's a major division in Islam. And so that's why they don't say that, oh, look, the Iranians also helped get rid of ISIS, because ISIS was us. That was funded by the CIA. And uh, then we had our special forces fighting the CIA forces. Yeah, you see yeah. how, and that was under Obama. And it would have mm -hmm. happened under Bush. Let's say it was Jeb. It mm -hmm. would have happened on, it would, definitely would have continued under Hillary. Look Correct. at what she did to Benghazi. Uh, this is wash, rinse, repeat. And Trump's trying to break that cycle. And I Trump don't even, hey, funny you say that because Trump even tweeted out this is not going to be like Benghazi. Right. And it wasn't. It was nothing <laughs> yeah. like it. We didn't lose any. We lost a contractor. Look, I'm a contractor. You know that. That's what I do for a living now. Right. And the greatest part about being a contractor is it's not a dead soldier. Do you think anybody out there is going to give a fuck outside of my family if I croak out and they say contractor died over here? No. It's a contractor. Mm -hmm. They didn't say his name. I'm not coming back in a flag draped coffin. Uh, there's going to be no fanfare at Edwards Air Base or out there in D.C. Uh, right, yeah. Can't think of the air base out there in Maryland. But the point is, I'm not coming back in a flag grape coffin. And that's okay. And that's why this entire war should be done, and it, and it really is being done this way now, but most people don't understand it. When they talk about 5,000 troops and stuff, most of them are commandos. Uh, special forces, dudes that have been in for a long time, and, uh, you know, Rangers, Special Forces, MARSOC, whatever you want to, your SEALs, uh, that's who's in Iraq and Afghanistan for the most part, and they're training Iraqis or Afghanis, and and also adding support, this area and the other. The Marines are always going to be in embassies, that's one of the jobs they do, and the rest are contractors. And that's really how this war should have started from the first place. We should never have had this. I was over in Iraq and Afghanistan while it's been under occupation since 2001. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 2005 was when I went over to Iraq for the first time. Uh, this is not a foreign thing to me. And for them to say, just like you said, and I'm going to sound like an idiot repeating what the media will say, because this is what they're <laughs> going to say. Look, he pulled out. Look, we're leaving our allies alone. No, right. wait, wait, wait. Those allies told us to leave. Yep. And and people will be like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's kind of right. It's just like the, the fallacy they're talking about with uh, it's Biden's campaign, if memory serves, that's mm. running this ad saying – uh, taking Trump's quote out of context, there's a lot of nice people at Charlottesville. No, he said, yes, there were bad people on both sides, and there were some good people that were there just to protest against the statue being taken down. Right. And that's what that was supposed to be, was a protest against the statue being taken down. And Anybody who was there can tell you that all of a sudden people came up with rolled up flags, could have been American flags, didn't know what they were, and all of a sudden two flags come out. And what did the media do? They went right to those flags and then those mm. idiot people that were there. And you got people captured by camera that weren't even with that crap. But it, it, guess what? To this day, they're still called Nazis. 
Right. So, yeah. you know, who cares? This The media lies. <clears throat> Politicians in D.C. are scumbags. And, uh, you know, we've just had a coarsening of our society, sadly. It, I really mean that, sadly. Because uh, I'm, I don't remember ever a time, even when I was young, that somebody said, that's a Democrat or that's a Republican. Don't talk to them. We live in that time now. We're so poor. Oh, it, it, it's crazy. Look, I'm Cuban. Uh, my background is very mixed. You know, I have everything from black to Asian in my uh, family background to Spain. Uh, so it's very, you know, it's pretty mixed. Um, and I've been called a Nazi. And I'm like, how the hell am I a Nazi? Like, they would hate my ass. I mean, <laughs> uh, to, to be honest, they wouldn't like me in, in any KKK rally uh, if they knew my background. And I was born in Cuba. So, I mean, I'm not even uh, American. So how would the KKK love me? And, and I, you know, I know a lot of white people. I know a lot of uh, Hispanics, uh, you know, black. I know a couple Chinese. I actually went to, uh, I was working with a Jamaican Asian gentleman for a while. And, uh, you know, I, I've worked with Iranians also. And I've, you know, I've been around. And I, and guess what? At the end of the day, everybody's pretty much on the same page. We just want to go home and live our lives. And it's amazing how the media spins everything uh, incredibly out of control to the point that now we have terrorists like this past, uh, you know, a few days we had uh, Kwasim uh, Soleimani, who of course shot dead. And what happens? The, you know, we have the left going crazy, almost, you know, apologizing for his death. This is the guy who's caused the death of thousands of Americans. We know that for a fact. He's been on the stage for, what, two decades, three decades, causing nothing but, you know, terror. And we take him out on a military, uh, you know, exercise, and we don't cause death to anybody else but him and a couple other bad guys that we know of, and the left are up in arms. You know, they're literally, you have imbeciles like Rose McGowan, like who cares what Rose McGowan has to say, but it's been all over the news that she's literally, literally apologizing for the death of this guy. And uh, you have, of course, the uh, the fraud squad, Ilham Omar, Rashida Tlaib, AOC, Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, the entire uh, group on the left, also like on the brink of apology to a terrorist who has killed Americans. That's amazing. And that kind of like mentality is something that even, you know, 15, 20 years ago was unheard of, even during the Clinton presidency. Well, see, Soleimani is a unique creature. Um, first off, he's been in power. He was next to Khomeini during the uh, Iranian Revolution of the RGC. Right. I yeah, he's been there for like 30 lot. years, right? Like he's been there for like three decades Since at least. 79. Yeah. Since 79. And four, yeah, so we're four talking 41 years. And yeah. he is a, the head of what's called the Kuds Force. Now, mm -hmm. I know, I've known about him for years. In 2004 and 2005, they were the one, in 2006, they were the ones bringing the EFPs, explosively fired projectiles in, and they set up EFP manufacturing centers in Wasit Province, which is in Iraq, where I was working. Um, and that's, that's the Iranian guards, you know, the Kuds Force. And, right. um, the, to, to break it down, it's a uniform service, just like our special forces, but they also have intelligence gathering like our CIA or DIA, mm -hmm. okay? Yep. So to call him a terrorist, he that's a fallacy because under the laws of land warfare, he's considered a uniformed belligerent, okay? And that's something right. that well. we've agreed to with every nation on the planet. And they're using the term terrorist so he could be taken out. Now... I'm not now. I'm not justifying them. I'm not saying anything other than the facts. But when you view, yeah, but when you view him as your enemy, to you know, to call him a terrorist is not far fetched. I know he's a general, but uh, the fact that he has killed Americans, he is uh, third in command, and he has, uh, you know, openly endorsed terrorism around the world. So I mean, to call him a terrorist is, you know, maybe not factual. 
uh, like the left likes to say, well, let's get more emotional than factual, right? Well, you, fine, let's do it on this case, because as far as I'm concerned, this asshole is a terrorist. You know, well, that's, just, I, that's the way I, I feel. I, if, if I'm going to do that, then I have to be fair with myself. <laughs> I've trained Iraqi police. I've trained Iraqi military. I've trained Afghani military and Afghani police. I'm sure some of those people were bad and did some terroristic acts, even if they did it for our own nation state. Do you understand what I'm saying? If they did it for America, that still could be construed by some people as a terrorist act. That's why I said this is a slippery slope. And I, I mean that because I'm talking, and emotionally, I agree, he's killed people I know. His his handiwork has. Mm -hmm. He is an enemy. I respect my enemies. i got to meet my enemies, unlike a lot of people. When I went, my first war was the Gulf War, brother. And I got to go back again in 05 and 06 to see the Iraqis and even met a guy that may have been the artillery guy that killed a friend of mine because they were in the same area and he was doing artillery missions. And we both looked at each other with a jaundiced eye and now we smile, laugh and joke because he's a brother. He served and sh served with honor next to me. And so th that's it's just something that. If you've ever seen, there's a movie out, and I know you're big on movies, and it's something I saw when I used to watch movies, but George Clooney, I think his name was, was some girl, it was called The Peacemaker, and there's a part where this Russian and him, who are friends, and that's back when, the you know, Cold War was still fresh and over, um, he's talking to him, and he goes, oh, I'll go talk to him, it'll be fine, and he shoots the Russian guy gets shot right in front of him and he's telling the girl as they're trying to get away, he's like, some people you just don't kill. When I talked about Soleimani, he also helped us out by taking down ISIS. So, because that's that Sunni Shia split. And, uh, you know, well, that's because was ISIS more... was the enemy pretty much of everybody in that region. They remember they were trying to take soup. They were trying to become the superpower, uh, they destroyed everybody. That's why they had everybody kind of like go against them and, and join forces. I yeah, mean, I, I, again, I, again, I again the, it, that time. So, so you I know exactly know what I'm it. saying. Yeah. And, yeah. and, but well, what I'm saying is, no, Saudi Arabia is our biggest ally. Oh, right. guess what? Saudi's hands were involved in it, in ISIS. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Clinton. And Obama, mm -hmm. remember he got that Correct. bling to hang under his neck for the yep. Saudi Arabian big thing that was a crime. You can't take a gift like that, but Correct. he was allowed to. Um, anyways, even one time in Idlib, I believe it was, uh, an Israeli colonel was a part of ISIS. He got captured on film. So even our allies are duplicitous in that area. So if we're going to do something, then we get entirely out of that area because even our allies have thrown it up uh, on us. And uh, it, it's just a duplistic area, because, and it's got to be that way. I understand why it's that way. But I'm telling you, I just don't like when a military – right now there are four old gentlemen, 80 years old, that have been prosecuted by the uh, new government – in the UK over the Irish war, you know, the troubles in Northern Ireland for taking out terrorists, but they were soldiers and they're, they're being charged with terroristic acts. So where does it stop? And, and that's my problem with it. I mean, under Obama, we were taking out people with drone strikes that were American citizens with no due process saying right. they were a terrorist. So I but like uh, but Trump again, yeah. Him. But again, you ask where, where does it stop? Well, here's the thing. Uh, you know, Trump just got into office three, four years ago. All this stuff happened with Obama, Bush, right. Clinton. Right, right. This is where it started, and this is why they all hate Trump because I think he legitimately is trying to stop this nonsense, and he's trying to say, listen. Why are we all fighting? Let's start trading and negotiating and, you know, making everybody rich. And there's been war for so long in these countries, and there's so much split and division and hate 
uh, that's been there for decades and decades, sometimes centuries, that that's not easy to do. And there's so money, so much money involved that when you have a guy like this who's really a billionaire and he's saying this stuff, uh, you know, that's why you're having all the issues you're having with him. That's it. I mean, that, oh, that, right. that right. Yeah, that's but it. I think he might have, I think he might have accidentally got us out of there. And if that's what he did by killing Soleimani, yeah. good on him. If a rocket up the ass of Soleimani gets us out of that region, I'm good with it. But mm-hmm. my point is, I just don't like to see our nation violating the laws of land warfare, and I'm being consistent with it. I didn't like it when Obama was doing it, <clears throat> especially a uniform belligerent mm-hmm. under an international recognized uh, laws of land warfare. We all have to follow it if we go to war. If he's an ununiform belligerent, there's even classes of that. The only people that are not uh, uh, able to be defended under the laws of land warfare, and it's not spies like people think, are foreign soldiers, right? I.e., ununiformed mercenaries. So that's a fact. That's the death penalty if you get caught doing that. And but there's been mercenaries like Tim Spicer, who I know, he's gotten away with it. He owned, a matter of fact, he owned um, uh, Aegis. Mm-hmm. He got a two hundred million dollar no bid contract in '04. Uh, he's with the guy who tried to take over Papua New Guinea. Uh, there's just a lot of, that's an old school hit, but my point is that, uh, you know, I, I just don't like to see a trade that I love. That's a profession of mine. that is a profession, uh, get besmirched like this because of, uh, politics. I, I, it just soldiers and i know at the general level they become politicians there's a whole big couple of schools they all go to generals and admirals in america they learn to be politicians uh, you want a prime example of it look at mad dog mattis he's more of a politician but an awesome general he was one of the few that could blend it uh but i just really despise when politics gets because a soldier and marine airman sailor they should be above politics because anybody who's serving while they're serving gives up their constitutional rights. They fall under UCMJ, Uniform Code of Military Justice. And it's Correct. a whole different world of prosecution that you look at for anything. And uh, so it's just a different world. And for you to defend that constitution, you can't be protected by it. And and that's a fact. And this is just something I don't, I don't like this mix. But if, it, if, if Soleimani's death means we get out of there... I'm all for it, but I do think there'll be ramifications, repercussions. We probably short cycled a couple attacks that were inbound. I'm sure of it. Then we always forget the long term, and that's my bigger concern. And your thoughts on it, brother? Sorry, I ran it, but you know, I, this one. No, no, it's just, cool. It's like a bee in my head. You know, cards are. I, I really enjoy hearing your insight again. I hope you're doing good too. Um, I think as a nation, we're, we're definitely failing. We're, we've got a lot of shortcomings going on. First off, we're not looking at the bigger picture. Where's America going to be 20 years from now? Where's Where are we going to be 100 years from now? We're not thinking like that. It's always, what what are we doing right now? What what, what happened last week? We're so caught up in um, these conflicts that have been going on. We need to get out of that. And I hate to say it, and I, you know, some people may or may not agree with me on this, but we have no business being over there. I've been saying this since 2003, 2004. We need to get pulled out of there a long time ago. If this is a first step, I, I do find it a little questionable, but if we, if this will allow us to get out of this rut we've been in, we need to focus more on developing our infrastructure, um, getting out of these, um, uh, you know, these manifestations that are going on around the world that have nothing to do with us. Um, I'm tired. I mean, we keep mentioning Saudi Arabia. I mean, we got the uh, UAE. We got the UN. Let them police that area. We're always over. We're like we're swinging our nuts everywhere as a country, and I'm, I'm just frankly over it. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think there's issues going on between uh, left and right. Um, and just to be specific on my background, I I consider myself to be an independent, um, and I don't like the term liberal like you just like you mentioned earlier. I think the term is being misconstrued. If it, it seems like people call me a liberal, and I'm like, 
uh, according to my voter registration, it says independent. I'm not a liberal. <laughs> yeah. That there's a big difference. Just because I don't agree with you as a Republican or even a Democrat, that doesn't make me a liberal. Correct. Okay. You know, I, I think I, I don't I don't like using the term. I don't like how it's being thrown around. Expect people throw around words all day on the internet because they don't have. Well, to you know, and and I'm and, and we're gonna get a little racy here, but I mean it's it's because of uh, the skin tone, man. They look at you and they're like, oh, automatic liberal Democrat. Well, yeah, you they know? people do make assumptions. And I deal with this in my yeah. personal life every day. You know, they think that just because I'm black means I'm against the police. I'm not for the police, but I'm not against them either. They think because I'm black, I'm automatically Democrat. They, right. they think that, you know, X, Y, Z. And, and, and Angel, you go through the same thing. Yep. Because you just mentioned you're a Cuban-American. You have multiple uh, racial descents within your family. They assume X, Y, Z. Hell, they probably still think you, you're allied to Fidel Castro after all these years. <laughs> I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah. Probably, it's funny because I... in your house. I, 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 well, that's a jokey poster, but, you know, it's funny because I was... <laughs> I was attacked uh, by Q- an older Cubans here for going against uh, Julian Castro, who was running for, for Democratic office. And I asked him, I was like, do you think I'm dumb enough to vote another Castro into office after the last Castro you guys voted in Cuba? And look how that turned out. Now you're over here and you want to repeat the same garbage? Uh, I mean, these guys are talking about the same kind of socialism. What I love is how, you know, these guys running on the left, and this is what trips me out, is they're all pushing narratives uh, to, to fail institutions like socialism, communism, which for, you know, Julian Castro was hysterical because he comes from a background that has that, you know, still running as a power, you know, it's, Cuba is still a socialist, communist country, and it's been a disaster for 70 years since the other Castro took power. Uh, so, you know, why would these people want to bring their problems to this country? Now, getting back to, you know, what you were talking about, uh, you know, you're automatically assumed to be a Democrat because you're black. I am automatically assumed to be a Democrat because I'm Latino, and I'm like, nobody's trying to kick me out. I'm a citizen. You know, everybody's like, oh, well, Trump is going to kick you out of the country. No, he's talking about illegal immigrants. He's never said anything about Cubans that are citizens. I've been a citizen uh, for like three decades. Why would he come attack me? Makes no sense. But there's that mentality. And what really irks me is how, you know, there's push from the right, there's push from the left. We have a, literally a, almost a civil war that's going on. The media is behind all this stuff. At the same time, we have the, the uh, stuff in the Middle East with Soleimani, which we were talking about here uh, before we segued it back into more of a racial thing. But look, the whole Soleimani thing is, to me, really what's more serious because at the end of the day, the Middle East is always going to be a problem. It was a problem before we got involved. It's going to be a problem after we leave. Uh, so, you know, the question is, how long are we going to be involved in this problem before we say, listen, we've had enough. You know, we've had enough dead American citizens that we sent over there. You know, our, our young people that have gone over there that have enlisted to come back wounded or not come back at all. And again, we're, we're at war trying to defend not only, uh, you know, hypothetically speaking, their freedom and stuff, but we all know it's about money and oil and power and gold and all this other stuff that's behind the scenes. We know what really is happening, but at this point, we are independently rich when it comes to oil. We are having a prosperity in this country right now in the growth in economics and, you know, from, uh, you know, all time lows and jobs, uh, being lost to other countries are coming back to the country now. We have record gains for unemployment, uh, you know, numbers going down for all kinds of communities. Trump goes, you know, through the numbers all the time. African community, uh, you know, unemployment rate is at an all time low. Hispanic, you know, Asian, and all the other communities are, you know, experience growth when it comes to employment and their unemployment numbers are down, which is what you want to see for the country. So we're doing good economically. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that, you know, gets hated on when Trump does it, like the sanctions and all this other stuff, seems to work on, on, a, on a scale here in this country. And I think that's 
something that's causing, you know, of course, the the backlash from the Democrats. So there's a lot of stuff in play that which we could do like a 10-hour show on. But the, the funny part is that we cannot, while well, we need to get out of the Middle East, that's still going to be a problem. So I think taking out Soleimani, whether you want to call him a general or, or a terrorist, that it could lead to, you know, them saying, listen, the Americans are not playing around. This is not like the Bush... Obama era where we can do whatever we want. This guy actually means business if we uh, make the wrong move because this was triggered by something that they were you know, saying was going to happen, right? So what did Trump do? He said, okay, let's take this guy out. And, you know, uh, Congress is mad because he didn't let them know. Uh, of course he's not going to let them know. They're going to leak it if he lets them know. In fact, before he became president and they asked him about war strategies, one of the things that I love that Trump said was that he would never announce when he's going to, you know, do something militarily, that he would do it and then talk about it because it makes no sense to announce it two months in advance. Yeah, we're going to be attacking this part of the Middle East and we're going to turn our... Tr- that's stupid to do that in advance. You're basically telling the enemy, hey, get out of the way. We're going we're to come get you. That's not how you do things. And Obama was doing that because he didn't want to really hit targets. Uh, you know, I, I question to this day whether he actually was involved at all in killing uh, Osama bin Laden, even though I know the Navy SEALs have come forward and everything. I kind of question if that was even Osama bin Laden that they killed. Maybe they thought that was him, but, uh, uh, you know, that's questionable because he was so anti going after anybody that, you know, that's how a lot of ISIS and a lot of these groups in the Middle East were, were forming. And, of course, he was budgeting a lot of the stuff with our own taxpayer money, which disappeared. So, uh, Kaiser, any uh, last uh, words here uh, uh, from my ramble? Yeah, I'll, p- I'll pigeon into the same thing you said about OBL. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, that's a terrorist. Yeah. Never served. Uh, he was uh, all all al-Qaeda means is the list. And it was a list of Arabs that come over and take pot shots at Russians, trained through Saudi Arabia, handled through Saudi Arabia. And look how that bit us in our ass. And I had heard years ago, back in 02, that, that OBL assumed room temperature in Tora Bora. Mm-hmm. And I believe that, and I believe it was kept for the reason that I was told it was kept secret, was that they didn't want to make him into a martyr. Uh, when OBL assumed room temperature officially, and notice he got dumped in the ocean, no uh-huh. DNA was collected. I mean, a Nothing. lot of bizarro stuff went on with no that No pictures, and not even a hand. <laughs> it's classified, I'm sure. But the point is, is uh, you know, it was done during an election season. And that's just, you know, it was untoward, whatever. It is what it is. If it, if it was legit, legit. Yeah, I, if I was told wrong, I was told wrong. But whatever. We'll figure that one out in the history books, I guess, when I'm dead. My son will read about it. But <laughs> the greater point is that, um, yeah, if we get out of there, no matter what it is, then I'm happy with it. Um, yeah, you know, I'm I'm half Sicilian and half Kraut. You know, so I always call myself the Dago Kraut. Uh, yeah, ain't no Nazi group or KKK want this old Sicilian in there. So, but, you know, people will say what they're going to say, you know, in, in terminologies of, you know, this if this was on YouTube, it'd get us banned. But it was like when that dude was calling himself Fredo and said that was a slam. Yeah. Dude, I've been called spaghetti nigger and lasagna nigger more times than you'd want to know. You know, and and it just makes me laugh that people want to fucking act like words hurt. You know, I I grew out of that when I was about five years old. You know what hurts? Bullets hurt. You know, knives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. fists or <laughs> sticks and stones, baby. But <laughs> words will never hurt me. I guess we're not teaching that to the youth today. Uh, but anyway, so the point is, man, we I think. The best thing I think can happen is if we get out of there, the people see, the American people see that uh, Trump is pro-America. I still believe that. Uh, I haven't dissuaded myself from that thought process. Um, He's looking to make America a better country when we had it undermined 
for God since uh, Bush Senior. Honestly, the thousand points of light speech. I always have to correct people mm-hmm. when they talk about the term political correctness first being used. They always say it's Bill Clinton who said it or the Clintons, and I'm like, no, it was George Bush's thousand points of light speech. Yep, uh, a kinder, gentler, more political, correct society. And that's where it started. And so there's not a penny's worth of difference between the Republican and Democrats. And if they're neo-progs, and I've got to be specific, or neo-cons. And progressivism is just a code word for, uh, as Michael Savage says, one of my favorite radio guys, he says, Democrats run to communism, Republicans walk towards socialism. And what he was trying to say was neocons and neoprogs. There are good Republicans and good Democrats. I know, so obviously I must be a Nazi too for saying there's good Democrats and good Republicans. <laughs> the problem is they've been divided by a lying media. And Trump, thank God, has shined the light of lying media. That and Project Veritas, by the way, if you haven't uh, heard of that, check them out on YouTube. Type in Project Veritas. And, uh, you know, if uh, that doesn't pull anything up, also put in Jeff Zucker. Yeah, if you don't know who he is, he runs uh, CNN. And your mind is going to be blown, gentlemen. Uh, they have completely exposed uh, CNN and why they're attacking Trump, why there's this uh, bias in the media against Trump. It all stems from, uh, guess what, The Apprentice when it comes to uh, CNN and Jeff Zucker. Uh, it goes back to something petty. They grew and uh, they said, okay, well, we're, we're bought and paid for anyway, so we're all in on Trump. And uh, the funny thing is you're going to hear uh, folks from CNN's own staff even though some of the people you see on the air uh, that trash Trump admit that it's all a bunch of BS, admit that the the whole Russian thing is a, a hoax, it, yeah, you know, it, it's coming right out of their mouth. And they know it's fake, but they run with it anyway because they're being told by none other than, you know, Jeff Zucker. That's the guy running uh, the whole uh, shebang over there. And then you have, uh, of course, all the other leftist news outlets that are all, you know, behind the uh, the calls anyway, like MSNBC and, you know, their constituents like uh, Rachel Maddow and Anderson Pooper Scooper and uh, Don Lemon Drop, Lemonhead, whatever. Uh, you know, the, the, the usual talking heads over there, uh, they, all they do is attack Trump. That's all they know. That's all they do. And there's a funny connection with, between those three. Do the connection and figure it out. Um, Here, here's a funny yeah. connection. You brought up uh, uh, Anderson Cooper, right? Yep. You know who his mother was? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Vanderbilt. Go ahead. But go ahead. Gloria Vanderbilt, yeah. And yeah. Uh, her father was Commodore Vanderbilt. Yep. So these lines, these family lines, these bloodlines, that's what it's about. And uh-huh. uh, people just need to tie tie the family lines in, even in my state, in my city at one time. We were called the largest small town in America. It's the capital city of my state. And if I would have done something wrong in the north, south, east, or west, um, there'd be a phone call that already was made to my mother by the time I got home because somebody would have done seen the old chef boy getting into some shit. And wanted to let old Betty know. Guys, we're all a lot of time here, sadly enough. Kasha, thanks for uh, jumping in on the call and, uh, uh, you know, helping out with the uh, conversation here tonight and, uh, you know, dropping in your insight. Uh, I know that, uh, it's not easy to, uh, talk about getting out of the, you know, the situation in the Middle East, but at some point, you know, after a couple of decades, it has to happen. So let's hope for the best. Uh, we're going to be back on live next week and uh, we'll have a whole lot more to talk about. Uh, on in the uh, inside the jackal's head uh, on audio. Now I do want to uh, announce that we are taking the show onto YouTube uh, in a video format. And uh, again, the website angelespino.com is where you're going to find all the content. Uh, just go there. The podcast for this will be uh, up there within the next uh, maybe half hour to an hour. Uh, but everything is on there for uh, your listening pleasure, and it's free. So again, angelespino.com is the website. 
Kaiser, any parting words before we uh, go off for the night? Just you be blessed, get well, and Brandon, it's always great uh, chiming in with all three of us. Uh, this this uh, this is a, a a genius move that Angel's done, and that's all I have to say. Oh, happy New Year to everybody! Yeah, indeed, Brandon. Uh, any uh, last words uh, before we go off the air? Hey, it was great having both of you. Um, happy New Year to all of you, uh, all the listeners. Hope everyone. Uh, has a great prosperous new year. Let's move forward uh, as a people, as a country. I great, enjoy the conversation. Um, I look forward to being on again. I appreciate you guys. Till next week, I bid you all farewell. Good evening, good night, uh, bon voyage, and all kinds of different words I can't say because I just uh, I can't pronounce them. But take care, everybody.